He also said, never curse a rooster. You know, some people like in the morning, the rooster starts crowing. <laughs> he said, never curse a rooster because they're waking people up for prayer. So the rooster is a blessed uh, animal. Um, and, and the Prophet Sallallahu did have one. He also had, there were cats in the house. There were also dogs in the early period. Um, Aisha had a puppy dog. Uh, Jibril complained about it, and the Prophet Sallallahu did not keep any dogs in the house after that. But there were dogs in Medina. The type of attitude that m Muslims have towards dogs is completely unacceptable. Um, the, the three imams considered dogs to be nejis, that they're, they're unclean animals. Imam Madik was not of that opinion. His proof to me is a stronger proof. Uh, the hadith, إِذَا وَلَغَ كَلْبٌ فِي إِنَاءٍ فَغْزِرُوهُ سَبْعًا If a dog licks in a bowl, clean the bowl seven times. Imam Madik said, had it been for najasa, he would not have mentioned a number. Because to remove najasa is just whatever it takes to remove it. But the fact that he mentioned sab'an, he said that it means it's ta'abud, that the wisdom is not known to us why we're told to do that. But Madakis have never had a, a problem with the dogs. And um, seeing eye dogs, I mean, I've seen, I know Muslims, there's Muslims uh, in our community there's, uh, who have seeing eye dogs. And when they come, it's like suddenly everybody becomes, uh, which is not really appropriate for somebody who has a seeing eye dog. It's just not really a very nice thing to do to somebody because dogs are very beneficial. They're, they... They're also animals that uh, are guard dogs. Ibn Abi Zayl al-Qayrawani, the great Maliki scholar, had a guard dog in his house, and some people kind of complained about it. He said if Malik was alive today, he'd have a lion in his, in his yard. In other words, things aren't as safe as they used to be. <laughs> so if you have a, know a Muslim that has a... I had one of my teachers had a guard dog, and I saw with my own eyes, because I used to eat with him, and, and with my own eyes I saw this. He would take the couscous, roll it, put it in his left hand, and feed the dog while he was eating dinner. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah, so, and I'm, I don't know anybody that has the wara of that man. I've never seen anybody that has the wara, the scrupulous of that man. Hafalullah. Uh, so, the you know, dogs, just be nice to dogs. That's my message there. You know, don't... Uh, the kalb al-aqur, which the Prophet said to kill, is like a rabid dog, a voracious dog. Um, but, but just the, 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 the dogs that um, you see in the West, you know, really don't... Uh, it's just people have dogs. They're dog people and they need to become Muslim. They can become Malikis, you know. <laughs> You know, they, they have a redneck bumper sticker. My wife, definitely. My dog, maybe. My gun, never. Right? Yeah. So, and then the cats. Somebody mentioned yesterday that the prophet had a cat with a name. I don't, I don't know that. I looked, tried to find that, but I could not find uh, that. But we know the Prophet liked cats. He called them tawafat, things that live around the house. Cats are very good. They, they kill harmful animals, rats that carry diseases, snakes. Uh, and uh, and, and they're, they're special creatures. I mean, they, they just, they're amazing creatures. You can learn a lot from watching cats. The, uh, so there were cats in the Prophet's house. Some in the Shafi'i Madhab, they have uh, more scrupulousness about cat hairs and praying with cat hairs, uh, things, like, things like that. So generally the hairs of the animals should be avoided as much as possible. If you do have pets to pray with a rug that doesn't have the, the, the hairs on them. Um, 